This is Intake, this is Project Z, and today I've swapped beers. Oh, there's something much more satisfying about cracking a can rather than popping a bottle. Today on Project Z, we're fucking off the factory upper front upper camber arms and replacing them with these ones. Uh, there are mixed reviews on the internet, but apparently they're okay. Let's find out. This should be about a uh, three beer job. Poof. Oh. Fucking magic. So because we're not here to fuck spiders, I've already taken the wheel off, jacked the car up. It's on a stand on the other side so it's nice and safe. And we're ready to remove this section of bits and pieces to fuck off that old part, put the new part in position. What we're going to do today, because we do need to get the, uh, the wheel alignment done, we're going to change up the suspension a bit, and we have ordered new front tyres. We're just going to install the new camber arm at the same length as the stock ones. So that way it should be, hopefully, in the same position as what they currently are now. And uh, then when we get to go down to the tyre shop and get it all set up properly, we'll be able to make use of these new camber arms. So, let's get into it. Ooh. So great. It's amazing that underneath all this dirt and rust, there's a brand new bolt in there. After all these years, it's kept so so fresh. What I'll do is I'll just put that bolt, that nut back on so I can belt that out with a hammer. Hopefully not fuck anything in the process. Yeah. There's probably a way that you're supposed to do this. No one's told me what that is yet. This could be dangerous. This is going to be one of those jobs where I'm going to instantly regret it when I can't line everything back up again. Ah, oh, fuck, there goes my shoulder. You bastard. So that's good. Um, I can't really get a socket into there. I always use a, an appropriate extension. It appears we've hit our first snag, and I'm not really sure what to do. I'm sure, we can figure it out though. Now the thing is, is there a fucking? I don't know. If there's a the bolts on the other side. For fuck's sake, you! Surely there's something going on here. We only popped the bonnet earlier today. Got grease all over my fingers too. Get my hand up underneath this fucking thing. Fucking piece of shit. I got those new um, bonnety clips, so they're not broken. So there's no bolts on the inside of the engine bay. They're just um, like welded, welded, whatever thingies. So uh, these are just right to um, they're undo. This might actually be one of those projects where we're like victorious without fucking up. I'll probably have spoken too soon now, but. This is what I'm hoping for. It's it's a nice day here. We all know that last episode it was very, very wet, very, very cold. We're trying to make the most of this. We were actually going to do this in the tire shop and do it all at once, because it was just getting too horrible here. But we've actually got a chance to do something today and we're making the most of it. I'm still amazed at like how everything's still rather clean in this car for how old it is. 
I mean, on my old Z, my S30, everything was stuffed on that when I got it. And it, it was at the, about the same age when I bought it. Yeah, what's going on there? I think I've got the wrong size. Must be. That's a 15. It's a 13. I reckon I need a 14. What's the, uh, what's the Imperial version of a 14? 9 16 perhaps. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. This is just going to strip this bolt nut. Nut bolt. Fuck. What are we going to do? I have spoken too early. Hot tip for the day. If uh, something's getting in your way, just use a spanner and just jam it up out the way. Now I can get into things a bit easy. No wonder that's not going on. It wasn't on straight for a start. Well, maybe not. Oh, that one is. Oh, that one's bird, that's why. Oh, that's it's slipping off. How can I make that loose? I need like an extension bar on it to extend it. See that one, if I use this like double jointed dildo. Alright, now that's out there. In theory, should be able to. Oh, fuck you, you bastard. Oh, fuck. It's not working. All it's doing is just stripping those bolts, those nuts. What I need to do is somehow use a spanner on them. Knock them down with the hammer, but I haven't got the room. I haven't got the room for the hammer belting. Hmm. Shit. It's actually quite painful. If you just get a bolt in there, it'd be up here. Ah, uh, it's bending. Fucking. Um. Oh, I, I wanted a new spanner anyway. Oh, oh this is going to need another beer. This is bullshit. Oh, you... That absolutely moved on the bolt. Even if I did leave those in there and undo this, it's not going to come out because that bolt's going to hit this wall over here. This might be one of those jobs where you're gonna say, hey, I can't do it in my garage with my limited tools. Because at some point, this has been removed and just tightened beyond belief. I don't like it. Well, this might be the first episode of Intake where we can't do what we said we were going to do, and that is that we were going to install those camber arms in the front of 
Project Z, but the bolt's seized up. Uh, really need to get some leverage, need to get under the car. Uh, we're gonna have to do it at the shop when we get the new wheels on there. Just the suspension at the same time. What we might do, because we can't do nothing today, we'll get this all back together, throw the wheels on there, we'll jack the rear end up and lower it. Who doesn't want to see the car get slammed more? But we can do that. I'm sure we can do that. I don't really want to put this back together. It's annoying me. Now, as this is a vital piece of suspension, car geometry, if you will, we don't really want it falling off. So as always, on intake here, we talk to spec. About there. And the other one. Safe as houses. Don't know what that saying means. Put this hammer away, we won't be needing that again. Just about to put the wheel back on. What I've noticed, uh, now we are getting new wheels, it's not because these are worn, you can see there's quite a bit of tread in here, but they're uh, 225s, we're getting a 245 at the front. What I've noticed is the excessive camber wear on this inside. Now somebody did mention when we introduced this uh, suspension project in a previous episode, uh, which I'll put a link in somewhere, that uh, we'd be the only channel in the history of YouTube that installs something to remove camber. Now, you can have a look here on the, on the old close-ups that uh, this is fucking near bald. That's pretty fucked, actually. And these tyres were near new, like when I bought them secondhand. But anyway, there's no shame in giving up on a project if it's going to cost you a fuckload more to fix it if you fuck it up. Now, I could have stripped those two bolts off there. Had to cut them off, get in there, grind it down. Hopefully didn't fuck that thread, which as I said, was welded in. And um, it would have cost me a fortune to get that fixed. I'm not gonna do that. Throw in the tear, get someone else to do it. Now, it's funny, last episode, it's pissing in with rain. This time it's nicer than an English summer. Now, that joke is for uh, one of our subscribers, Joseph. Yeah, he's from the UK. Anyway. I don't mind taking these wheels on and off because I've got these uh, steel lug nuts. If you guys are out there, you're doing your cars up, whatever, don't ever buy those aluminium ones off eBay. You put them on once and that's it. There's like 50 bucks a set or something. Like you're really ripping yourself off. They are shit ass. Just fuck them right off. Go get yourself a good set of steel ones. Make sure they're the right thre thread pattern as well. I've seen people buy like a 1.5 mil pitch thread. Thread. You know what's funny? I know why. I know why this episode didn't work. It's the beer god yelling at us for swipping, switching from Sapporo to the Asahi. And to that I say bah humbug. We only started drinking Sapporo because it was on sale when we were filming intake at the beginning. Now it's full price. You may as well buy these Asa Asahi cans. They're the real deal from Japan, rather than these, you know, imported shit from, I don't know where Sapporo's made. I think it's actually made in Tasmania or South Australia or something. Maybe Canada. I like my beers the way I like my cars. JDM, as fuck. I still like the um, Japanese Sapporo cans better though. They are nice. You remember last episode, I um, showed showed everyone my Nissan Fairlady Z, Z32 catalogs. Well, in the mail between then and now, I got my owner's manuals. Which is fantastic, because I haven't got anything for the car and this will tell me all about it. They are for the correct year, 1989 on the back there. Uh, it is for a Nissan Sports Fairlady Z. So that's the right car, Z32. Um, and everything is in Japanese. So I did buy the uh, correct one for this car because this car was privately imported from Japan in the early 2000s for somebody. So uh, I did want to get the Japanese owner's manuals. And this one is the uh, service manual. Uh, the only thing that's wrong with this is it's had the original owner's P 
page cut out, which is sort of disappointing, but that's okay. But what I really like about it is the, the sweet drawings of the uh, 300ZXs. I am truly convinced that this is what the 300ZX was meant to look like. Yeah, it's like the Volkswagen Beetle of Nissans. Anyway, because they are the owner's manuals, uh, there's no point keeping them in a... Oh no, I don't want to ruin it already. In a uh, piece of plastic on my shelf inside. That's where they belong. Oh no, they don't fit. Yes, they do. Just like that. Um, for those interested, they were picked up off Yahoo Auctions because um, I don't think you'll be able to find them on eBay or whatever, but you might. Good luck. Let's do some shit. Don't mind how dirty the car is. It's fucking filthy. First, we're going to jack the car up. We're doing this at the diff. We've already cracked the lug nuts, the wheel nuts, and uh, that'll make it easy to undo them when the car is in the air. You don't know how to do this, don't work on your car yet. Learn that first. Now I've worked it out, I had a quick, a quick look before. So I want to get like 20 mil more low, just under an inch, an inch more low. Um, now because we've got coilovers, this should pretty, be pretty easy to do. I say that now, after I said the last job was gonna be easy to do, it was not easy to do. Now, when I first got the car and gave it a good old clean up, I did clean these threads up because it was really ridiculous um, how dirty they are. But after driving it for a few months, it sort of has gotten a bit dirtier and made it a little bit harder to move them about. And we do have the spanners. Should we get into a little bit of trouble? Just like that. Uh, these Coilovers have a progressive spring rate because I know there's a few people there going, you don't move those ones, you gotta move the bottom ones. This doesn't have a bottom one to move. This is it. They are the cheaper ones. I didn't buy them, they came with the car. So, let's just see how much we've lowered it. I said about 20 mil. We're currently that's 15. Let's just keep going. Like, shouldn't be that hard to do, really. Let's keep going. A couple of bits where the thread is dirty. clean again. Look at it doesn't look like it's moving at all. I need to sit on something. This is really uncomfortable. It's just that you're getting it like behind the thing so you can't see where the lock-in point is. So further to what I was saying before about lowering this car with these kind of coilovers, this flat spring here is actually a separate spring to the spring above there. So as I uh, lower this by twisting this bottom uh, ring, you can see the top spring isn't actually moving at all. This, this is more of a helper spring and it keeps the other spring pre-tensioned, sort of. So, I mean, there are different ways of doing it, but you'll often see people on YouTube saying, hey, you can't lower a car by doing this. These 10s, T10 
tens, te, tens, te, in, ten, ten. They're ten coilovers. The way that these work is that they're designed to be lowered with this one coil. And this other one here, this uh, other uh, retainer, whatever you call it, thing, is just there to lock the other one into position. Um, it's the easy, it's an easy way of doing it. It's, it's not exactly the ultimate in the coilover technology, but it does work. And you know, if I go sort of more serious in doing track stuff, uh, which I'm yet to even get on the track, then maybe I'll look at upgrading them at that stage. But for now, these will do the job. So we're at uh, one, two, three, four, five, and just a little bit of number six peeking through the bottom there. We'll do up that retaining ring. Uh, these can't be talked to spec. So what we want to do is replicate that height on the other side. We'll get it perfect when we get the wheel alignment done. But this should get us our desired level of stance to make the ladies dance. So I'm just about finished up on this side, the uh, passenger side. I'm just going to put the wheel back on and um, sort of realised that today wasn't actually a total failure. I mean, I wanted to put in those camber arms so we didn't have to do it at the shop, saving a bit of time. We had to lower the car at the shop anyway. So, you know, I just swapped out one thing with another. And that means at the tyre shop, what we're going to do is install the tyres do the camber arms and do the wheel alignment rather than install the tyres, do the camber arms, lower the rear suspension and do the wheel, 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 wheel alignment. That's fun to say. So uh, doing the two legs of suspension, just the rears is one bare job. Unless your threads of your coilovers are really gummed up with road grime and dirt. It's just a mess. Then it's Many, many years. Many, many beer. Throw this wheel on. This is a massive wheel. This looks huge. Just looking at it. Looks like it's huge. Oh, I tell you what, I'd be laughing if I lowered the car and it's like three inches lower, I'd be like, oh no. And it's gonna stay like that until it goes to the tire shop because I can't be bothered lifting it. And then, I know I've been saying this so much, but I reckon, ooh, sit right there, there just, I reckon we're just about ready for paint. I think I've picked out which front bar I'm getting. And I'm not going to tell you. Um, and the rear bar can probably be saved, and we'll keep that. So, yes. And now to lower it. So we've just turned the car around. We already noticed that the, the uh, rear suspension settled, uh, or settling, and it's a. Uh, it's a much nicer look. It's more even from front to rear, and it's going to look better when we get those bigger tyres on the on the front. Really should make the car sit near flat. But as you can see, there's a there's a there's a finger gap there. It's pretty tight. But if I if I was to put a little bit of lubricant on there, it could probably fit two fingers up in that gap there. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm overall I'm pretty happy with it. I certainly couldn't fit my whole fist in there. So as we've loaded the car, we've got the two seven fives in the back here. All we really need to do is to finish up this more flat look is to get the larger tyres, the two four fives on the front, remove some of that negative camber to push this wheel out a bit at the top. It sits near flush at the bottom, but in quite a bit at the top there. So we can get that a bit more flat, bigger tyre, and that suspension uh, height is near perfect. So that is the end of today's episode of Project Z. Probably. I don't know what part we're up to, it doesn't matter. Uh, next episode, and I keep saying next episode, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, but next episode, I promise you guys, we are going to get this camber arm stuff installed at the tyre shop when we get the front tyres installed, get the alignment done, make it ready for hitting the racetrack, and that's 
that's our ultimate goal. We're gonna hit that racetrack and have a go. I've never done that before. I'll need to work out whether I need to buy sweet racing gloves, one of those racing suits and a helmet, or I probably just will buy sweet gloves anyway because everyone likes those and a, and a mad helmet. Uh, work out what I've got to do for a cams license or whatever. Maybe we can take you through the process because I would learn. I would be learning while you guys are learning, and that's that's fun. Um, so we're going to go into the tire shop, do that next week, then drive out of there straight across the road to the panel shop and get this car looking pretty fresh because we had the bonnet and the the hatch redone last summer. Get rid of that rust and that paint fade. The rest of the paint is absolutely fucked. We need to make the car look good. It's a nice car. It's looked after us for nearly a year now. Um, and it's kept you guys entertained. So it's time to spend a little bit of proper money on it. I'm not doing that myself because I'm shit ass at painting. Um, the stuff for Operation Sports Wagon, that is the coilovers, the strut brace, the exhaust, some floor mats, are in transit right now as I speak from Sydney to Melbourne. So don't forget to uh, like, and subscribe, hit the bell notification for the, you get notified when we post stuff. You can also hit up our Facebook page and we will be posting photos and other things from behind the scenes as well as when we upload things as well there. Uh, we have been known to post a meme or two. Is it meme or meme? Is it mem? I, I look, I, I'm beyond the age of, um, the age of memes. We'll be, we'll be posting some memes. It's, it's not memes, is it? It's memes, isn't it? Is it memes or memes? Comment below. I will respond with witty banter or an insult. Maybe something nice to say about you. You might have a good personality and I'll just want to comment about that. But if you comment there, I will personally reply back. Unless Ben thinks it's a good idea that he replies back before me because I'm going to say something rude. Anyway, that is it for intake. I've swapped to Asahi cans. Because I can do that. Boom. That's all I got.